to our uh, 10th public lecture. Um, we started uh, this lecture series, online lecture series, uh, um, since the beginning of the corona lockdown. And uh, as, a, as a learning platform, it's starting to be uh, uh, a great success where really many students are finding it a very useful mean of uh, education, exchange of ideas and uh, beneficial discussions. Um, we started our lecture series with uh, a colleague of ours in our school, Professor uh, Kamil Mahadeen, who is a, a leading landscape architect in uh, Jordan as well as in the region. So now it's fitting to turn into uh, a talk about uh, one of the most important landscape projects, uh, in, not in, only in Egypt, but also in the area. Um, um, we covered during these 10 uh, lectures uh, several issues of relevance, not only to our general audience, but also to uh, the specific needs of our uh, projects and uh, of our students' projects and uh, uh, our interest here in the University of Madaba. Uh, with our uh, issues pertaining to landscape, uh, like this lecture, to uh, adaptive reuse, to design visual communication, and uh, interior design. So this is a continuation of, um, uh, again, as I said, our uh, educational programs, and we are happy uh, to have uh, Dr. Karim Adil Ismail to present this lecture. I will let my our, uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Zayed, uh, from the Department of Arshar to present uh, Dr. Karim Ismail. And I really would like to give, uh, uh, express our appreciation, not only to Dr. Karim uh, Ismail and all of you, but particularly to Thank both uh, Dr. Zayed, who was instrumental in connecting us with you, and our uh, soldier behind the scene, uh, Claudine, Dean, who, who really was very instrumental in putting together uh, the whole program. Tadal, uh, Dr. Zaid. Thank you, Dr. Yasser, for this uh, introduction. Uh, thank you all for attending our 10th lecture uh, for this semester after the corona uh, lockdown. Uh, today we have a special guest from uh, a distinguished university, uh, which is University of uh, Auckland in New Zealand. I would like to thank him, especially because of the time difference. Now I think it's 9 p.m. in time. Uh, he did a great effort to be with us. Uh, Dr. Karim Ismail, he is uh, originally from Egypt, our dearest Egyptian uh, uh, Arab citizens. He holds the, he holds a PhD from University of Auckland and he did many research regarding the socio-ecological resilience of tourism destinations uh, that uh, was mostly in cases uh, from uh, Egypt. He holds also a master degree and MSc uh, in tourism planning also from uh, Malaysia and uh, his uh, bachelor's degree was from Cairo University, uh, Urban and Regional Planning. He now teach. Uh, he now teach at the University of Auckland, and he helps many uh, master and bachelor students uh, to publish. And he is a research assistant as well in University of Auckland. He had also has a practical experience uh, in Egypt, Malaysia, and New Zealand for the last uh, 50 years. Uh, he worked also in uh, Saudi Arabia uh, for Al Nasamat Al Rehab uh, City Master Plan. Uh, I hope I read it well, Dr. Karim. If you yeah. just, yeah. Also, it was he 15 years. Yeah. 15 years, not 50. I'm not that old. Years. Pardon me. Pardon me. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's my own mistake. Thank you. Uh, also, he uh, he did uh, work in uh, Negri Semblian draft stated structural plan in Malaysia, uh, in Kerio the restoration project of Barco complex, 
uh, and he is now a research assistant in the University of Auckland, and he's working as well as a visitor planner in the Devar Department of Conservation. Uh, so he basically has a wide um, academic and practical experience. Uh, and today uh, he will uh, be the major speaker in presenting the, the case of Al-Azhar Park, one of the distinguished cases of landscape project of restoration of, of an old dumping site in the heart of Cairo, heart of the most condensed urban agglomeration in the MENA region. Um, by MENA, I mean the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, I hope I introduced him well, and um, I would like to leave the floor to Dr. Karim to start his presentation. Thank you very much. Please, Dr. Uh, Zaid, but only a uh, few words. Uh, yeah, sure. I would like, yeah, okay, yeah, because we have a meeting now, I joined now yeah, and, uh, your meeting. I would like to welcome with Dr. Karim. It's our pleasure to have you. Sorry that I couldn't yeah, join uh, till now. Um, we are thinking not only for this lecture, we are thinking to have more collaboration uh, in the future. I don't know if we can uh, make anything in the future, but uh, maybe Dr. Zaid can uh, continue this collaboration and it will, will be our pleasure to have you uh, in the Faculty of Architecture and Design at the American University of Madaba. So welcome and yeah, sorry again you, that I, am, I was there. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Doctor. Um, that was the dean, Doctor Karim. That was the dean of our school, Doctor Professor Naif Haddad. Ah, thanks, Professor Naif, and uh, thanks, Professor Kamil, uh, thanks, Doctor Sakran, thanks, Doctor Zaid, and Claudine, of course, for inviting me today, um, and thanks for all the audience for um, um, having the time uh, during those difficult times to um, hopefully hear an interesting uh, lecture about as Dr. Uh, Zaid have described it, uh, and Dr. Sakr, one of the um, very successful, if I would say, sustainability projects uh, in the heart of Cairo. Um, without further ado, uh, again, I would like uh, to thank you so much for attending this, and hopefully the next uh, maybe around half an hour will be uh, beneficial and uh, will not be uh, boring, but uh, full of knowledge and hopefully followed by our opposed discussion. Um, as Dr. Sure. Zaid uh, uh, have said, um, being uh, an Egyptian um, uh, citizen, which I'm really proud of, and in the same time having um, experiences in both Malaysia and New Zealand, allowed me a rare opportunity to see lots of uh, landscape architect projects um, and to visit lots of cities and uh, one of the dearest projects was Al Azhar Park, which I have done this humble uh, paper trying to analyze its factor of success and hopefully we'll sharing it with you right now. Um, in terms of uh, the aim, as you know, as urban designers, urban planners, landscape architects, um, the approach of uh, traditional landscape was um, increasing the green areas in um, in cities from 50s. And that approach have been connected to um, social movements like the green movements in 60s and 70s. However, by time and due to, um, especially I'm, I'm talking about the developing countries, due to um, economic conditions and uh, socio sociopolitical as well uh, decisions, Lots of our projects have been focused on beautification uh, projects, especially related to um, residential areas and sometimes, and especially higher socioeconomic uh, areas, rather than being a full sustainability project. And that is, I think, the uniqueness about Al Azhar Park project, that it is not only a unique landscape architect project, but it is a full tool for sustainability. Um, for those who haven't been to Cairo yet, which I totally advise you to go, it's a beautiful city, although very crowded. Um, 1,050 years old uh, by now, um, 
one of the great uh, cities of uh, Middle East region. Um, and of course, uh, the most populated city in the Arab world um, with around 20 million inhabitants and um, around 5 million come daily commuting from the suburbia to uh, work in Cairo. So advice, uh, Cairo is best at night where you could see uh, a full beauty of it. Uh, of course, with this very high population density comes consequences which of um, very high air pollution, one of the highest uh, worldwide, unfortunately. Um, maybe not like um, some places like Delhi or Beijing, but really, in, especially in springtime, it is um, very, very um, high uh, air pollution. And unfortunately, because of the factors, especially economic factors, and lack of decision making related to um, increasing green areas in Egypt um, and instead increasing industrial activities or commercial activities or more residential activities. We have one of the lowest rates of available green space per inhabitant, which is almost one feet per person, almost 30 centimeters. And that is even, I think, uh, less now uh, with the increase in population. Due to that, for the last almost 70 years, maybe um, since the end of the um, royal family, I would say, which was a different uh, governmental structure or political system, we had huge uh, problems uh, in terms of parks around Cairo, which is very, very limited and mainly related to the uh, time of the royal family. So pre-1952, except maybe two or three new parks after. Um, we have lack of innovative management, unfortunately not up to uh, standard facilities, no maintenance mainly and monitoring because of a lack of funding. And uh, especially as a developing country, we unfortunately suffer heaps as everyone from lack of funds. And in the same time, unfortunately, there wasn't uh, a full engagement and participation and connection with local community and local culture. Um, you could see if any of you have uh, been to Cairo before, um, many of our main uh, parks, such as um, Giza Cairo Zoo or, or Orman um, uh, Park, are all designed um, lately relating to French and uh, British designs, if I'm not mistaken, and of course there is professors to uh, correct me. Um, but in the same time, it was not related to our Islamic culture or any of the features related even to um, old Egyptian culture, like the Pharaonic culture. Plus, because of the socio-political condition, unfortunately, we didn't have lots of communication with the community as in many times uh, planners working in municipalities. Um, and because of that, we have um, that huge environmental problem. But in 1992, um, uh, Prince Karim Aga Khan, uh, the uh, inheritant and the last um, leader of the uh, Aga Khan uh, Foundation, which is very famous, foundation uh, with one of the most prestigious architecture uh, prizes um, have been in Egypt and he have very close connection to Egypt uh, since his late father is uh, buried in Aswan, uh, south of Egypt. And uh, during one of the meetings in early 90s, he have seen that huge um, uh, piece of land, almost um, 80 faddans. One faddan is equal to um, 4,200 square meters. Um, in the heart of Cairo, of Islamic Cairo. And that was a huge, as you could see in the photo, that was a huge dump, actually a historical dump uh, of rubbish. Um, it is almost 500 year old uh, rubbish place uh, because it was just outside the old city and nearby the historical um, graveyard or the Mamluki graveyard. So that place was more or less considered to be the dump area of old Islamic Cairo. And we are talking about 500 years of dumping rubbish in that place, 
which is almost 40 meter uh, depths of rubbish, which have taken, if I'm not mistaken, around 80,000 uh, trucks for almost four years to clear uh, the place. After clearing it, there was a number of huge discoveries. And um, just to, before I forget, Prince Aga Khan was, uh, Karim Aga Khan, thought that I will fund, because of my love to Egypt, I will fund the project so that we could create a green lung in the heart of uh, Islamic Cairo instead of that dump site. And because of that funding and political will, the place have been turned over in four years with all those contractors to be fully cleared and where the concept have been beginning um, uh, with professors such as uh, Dr. Ibrahim Abdelhalim and uh, uh, Professor uh, Mahristino, and I think uh, Professor Laila Masri have also contributed in designing um, that place. All of them are uh, one of our most prestigious uh, professors of uh, landscape architect and urban design in uh, Cairo University and practice. And the site have been turned to be uh, ready for the construction of the park and construction as well of the three main big water reservoirs so that it could be a, a double use facility for storage of water, but at the same time, it could be helping the circulation of the whole irrigation system in the whole park. Um, and one of the huge and the amazing discovery after uh, taking all of those dump was uh, a Ubid wall, which is uh, 1.5 kilometer of the old Islamic Cairo wall have been discovered after taking all of that rubbish. And it was a very, very pleasant surprise. And in the same time, a very big challenge because it have turned the project not only to be a landscape, purely landscape architecture related to parks, but also it need to have different aspects, including the restoration of that project, which I will go in details later. For almost eight years of construction in 2004, the project have been uh, open to the public and it have been effective um, since then. So now it is almost 15 years since it have been first open. It have been opened um, with uh, Prince Akakan there and um, um, Prince Charles. Uh, and of course, um, in that time, uh, the First Lady Susan Mubarak. The place itself is unique, as I was saying, because of its location. Um, and I hope you could see my uh, mouse. Um, but it is related to the old Ayyubid wall, or like in many European cities, it is the old, 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 uh, old city wall, which have put into the um, left of the photo the old Islamic uh, Islamic Cairo, including um, um, uh, Al Azhar Mosque and including the whole old Mamluki era almost 600 years old places uh, and monuments. And at the same time, one of the busiest and most most rich and unfortunately underprivileged neighborhoods in uh, Cairo, which is Dar Blahmar, in one side, which is you could see in the left of uh, the screen. In the right hand side, it is a historical um, cemetery or what we called uh, Qarafat al-Mamalik where one of the most beautiful uh, uh, museums and graveyards for almost 900 years of Cairo history is there. But mainly because of that, um, the old dump site was in that location. But of course, after uh, construction of uh, that main road, Salah Salem Street, which is one of the main routes in Cairo, it have changed the landscape. And because of the Aga Khan Foundation, the park have become a reality. The park itself, if we go to the design aspect, as I was saying, is connected to different places and it, have, uh, it has to have huge accessibility if that landscape architect uh, 
project in that time need to be successful. It's connected to Salah Salem Street, one of the main routes um, connecting north and south of Cairo, metropolitan. It need to be connected to different BAB. BAB mean um, door in, uh, in Arabic for non, our non -speak, non Arab speaking guests, which is one of the doors related to the old Islamic Cairo. There was um, a Shoglan school, which is was an old school since um, the early uh, 20th century. So across the whole park, there was three main old um, doors to Islamic Cairo related to the wall, which increased significantly the, uh, sig the whole significance of uh, Al Azhar Park and how it will be related as well to the neighborhood around. In terms of the master plan, and I will go detail by detail later in terms of uh, specific features, um, the huge advantage of the place because of the water reservoir, which um, solved a huge problem in terms of irrigation and allowed um, lots of vegetation to be happening, especially native vegetation and um, lots of uh, palm trees in in the surrounding of the park so that it could be relating as um, a wind wall whenever uh, is needed. There was that combination between creating a park which is not only um, a beautiful green landscape area, but also it could be accessible to middle class and even lower, uh, lower um, socioeconomic class in Egypt. And in the same time, having different activities and facilities which will allow uh, businesses to be held inside the park, putting into consideration restaurants, cafes, and in the same time, uh, viewpoints and uh, areas, which also will increase the connection between the visitors and um, the vistas, which you will see very shortly, connected to the historical uh, wall of Cairo. And in the same time, which give the visitor a full panoramic view of Islamic Cairo, which is a very rare and extremely beautiful um, scene. As you could see in terms of the activities, it was connected to be, as I was saying, between the commercial side of having uh, high-end restaurants, but in the same time having water features, which is prominent um, as, of course, our professors know, in the Islamic architecture uh, related to um, a bit inspired by the Andalusian um, uh, architecture. And in the same time, creating main look points so that the visitors could, sorry, I'm hearing some noise. The visitor could see, um, as I was saying, the whole panoramic view of Islamic Cairo. And putting into consideration as well uh, areas for uh, community. Hello? Yep. Areas for community and at the same time, uh, children background because it is designed to be a family safe park. Putting into consideration, as I mentioned earlier, the huge lack of uh, public parks in congested city such as uh, Cairo. As you could see, that is one example of the image from um, the uh, Hill restaurant, where you could see a full uh, magnificent view of um, Muhammad Ali uh, Mosque uh, 180 years ago, and the whole uh, Salah al-Din Citadel, and number of main features of Islamic Cairo, along with the main uh, promade um, and uh, X or the main spine, if you would say, um, which is leading as if it is leading to the main vista, which is Muhammad Ali and the Citadel. And as you could see, the usage of uh, restaurants, as you have seen in the design, in both sides to be considered as vista or as a landmark, which is leading the visitors whenever they enter, and I will enter into design more, um, to orient or make a full orientation for visitors from both sides. Um, putting into consideration that not only that view from the um, 
eastern side which is showing the citadel but also from the eastern side it is showing one of our uh, magnificent mosques uh, sultan hassan complex and the rifai mosque which if i'm promoting to egypt it is a must um must see destination whenever you go to cairo one of the most prominent um islamic wonders if i would say of architecture as you could see the design of uh, hill restaurant um is fully adapting the islamic architecture um uh, perspective a mix between um the local you would say the local egyptian perspective of architecture which was influenced by the mamluki era almost 600 years ago um and you will find lots of our mosques uh, very similar in designs or uh, schools as well but in the same time it was influenced a bit by the andalusian architecture uh, which you could see even more in the coming few slides as I would say, the design, if um, any of you have been uh, to Alhambra in uh, Granada, in uh, southern Spain, uh, there is many features which is very similar, especially the usage of water in gardens, um, which is more or less uh, Islamic uh, architecture feature, but it is a speciality of the Andalusian architecture, if I would say and which was uh, influencing the designers. And you could see more and more uh, with those um, features that even within it is mixing and relying heavily on small uh, features, or sorry, many uh, various features of um, modern Islamic architecture and usage of wood and what we call um, uh, arabesque art which is a uh, local egyptian art and i'm sure it is in different other uh, arab states in terms of the landscape features if we go more and more in details you could see that most of those vegetation if you go to um uh, egyptian countryside are uh, very similar to uh, some not all of course of uh, vegetation happening in other places in egypt so that we are using native plants in the same time, you could see um, in the photo in the left-hand side, that is the main viewpoint, which is allowing that panoramic view of the whole of Islamic Cairo. And it is accessible um, through, I think, almost around 200 meter slope from um, the park level all the way up to the viewpoint. Um, one of the main features as well of the restaurants and of course of the lighting system is that it have allowed uh, Al-Azhar Park to be almost a uh, day and night uh, park which is used uh, by um, middle class Egyptians for their recreation activity, which is very rare in many of, unfortunately, our parks because most of our parks um, close uh, by um, night time. Um, mainly because of lighting and safety aspects. Al Azhar Park was um, an exception and still an exception which have created that public space, which is defying the whole um, theory that our engaging space is only malls and shopping malls, but we could actually be enjoying ourselves um, outside in open area. Of course, in countries like Egypt and developing countries, there is no space. So in the whole um, weight of the world, if I would say, the Al Azhar Park is considered a green lung for many Egyptians. And as you could see, um, the lighting system, even the most uh, small features of lighting system is all related to um, Islamic architecture features and related to the whole um, um, uh, features which you could uh, find very, very frequent in our mosques, especially the Mamluki mosques. However, as I have mentioned, uh, the project is beyond uh, being such a park, but also it is related to a whole redevelopment of the neighboring community, which is Darb al-Ahmar. As I was mentioning earlier, it, it is one of the 
most underprivileged um, neighborhoods. Um, through that and through a whole connected and integrated project, the uh, construction of the theme park and the project team saw that it will not be a successful mission unless it is related to upgrading of the um, surrounding community, especially the most immediate community of the Darb Rahmar um, neighborhood, where they tried, and you could see in the next few slides, uh, renovation of the resident houses and using the local capacity and skills of uh, local community to work actually in the park and work even the, in the construction of the park. And in the same time, the third project, so it is three in one, if you would say, was the restoration of the old Ayubit Cairo wall, which was discovered after um, taking the uh, rubbish, and in the same time, restoration of nearby mosque complex. All of that, of course, was because of the political will and as well because of the funding of the Aga Khan Trust. Um, if we go more into the design aspect, um, you could see more here clearly the Blue Mosque and Khair Barrier Mosque on the far um, left side of, uh, of the screen, where one of the, our most beautiful mosques, almost between 600 and 700 years old, El Dar Brahmar um, neighborhood, and you could see even the urban fabric, very old urban fabric, as you could imagine, uh, but unfortunately deteriorated uh, buildings. Um, in the same time, you could see the uh, in the north of the drawing, you could see the whole Ayyubid wall, uh, El Azhar hospital, and in the right hand side, there is a car parking because be because the park is uh, situated in uh, nearby a highway, so it need uh, a specific transportation solution to allow traffic, especially car users, um, to enter into the park. So it have one entrance from the eastern side, and the main entrance is from um, Salah Salem um, Street, which is was a bit of controversy, created a bit of controversy in terms of the safety and how um, how visitors will be uh, entering, especially if they are coming um, as pedestrians. So it created a bit of uh, tension in some times. But as you could see in the left side as well, number four is a restaurant, uh, lake restaurant related to the lake, which you could have seen in earlier slides, a playground as number two, and number 10, which is the hill restaurants, which I have shown. And you could see the contour, especially as landscape architects, um, how steep is the contour, which is allowing all of the all of the um, hill restaurant and the main the main pathway or the main um, um, yeah, the main pathway and at the same time uh, the other restaurants and the playgrounds to be having that privilege of a whole panoramic view and in the same time connection to all of um, the different play uh, surrounding uh, environment more in terms of the values um you could see that there was um and that is from um nasser um who have uh, done a very um comprehensive uh, paper in 2010 about the landscape arctic um, and how it is affecting urban parks. It's a case study of Lazar Park. Um, in his study, he has focused on the social interaction areas and um, the benefit and how it is affecting uh, the local community and how it's creating also, um, you would say, social image or areas for interaction, which is one of the main factors for um, any park, I would say. But also the whole idea of um, connection and from the same paper, connection and direction of the sites. As you could see, um, the, the place have that unique experience where you feel that you are, although you are in a green area, but you are embedded in the heart of Islamic Cairo history. 1,000 years of history through places and places. And in uh, some of those viewpoints, you have 
some information about where what you are seeing. And in the same time, as you could see, the connections between uh, the different viewpoints and the landmarks, as I have mentioned earlier, and how it is very, very um, affected by um, Islamic architecture. Some of our mosques are having the same sites and lines of movement, um, especially uh, Sultan Hassan Mosque. In terms of the restoration, one of those aspects, that was the uh, Ayyubid wall when we were trying to, when the asserts were trying to take the rubbish out and it have been transferred to that beautiful part. Um, and it is in continuous restoration, unfortunately, because of underground water, which affect its bases and the same time pollution and uh, lots of factors. So um, I would say it is a continuous restoration project. Khair Peak Complex, which was in the left side of um, the design slide earlier, you could see how um, its minaret, which was affected by an earthquake in 1992, have been fully restored, and Khair Peak Complex became a fully um, functional again historical uh, wonder of many wonders of Islamic Cairo. When we are looking at the social aspect, um, you could see that it deteriorated urban fabric, um, especially um, the whole, as I'm saying, socioeconomic class living in the Darb Rahman neighborhood are uh, one of the lowest earners in uh, Cairo. And I think the photo speaks for itself in terms of the living conditions. And uh, as you know, in Egypt, and sometimes you could see that all of those uh, houses is, are not even, their facades are not even finished because it is just constructed by um, what you call, um, uh, um, sorry, stones and um, and uh, main, uh, main architecture feature. But in the same time, mainly there is not enough money to finalize the facade from outside. That is how the neighborhood is suffering. And you could see how it was and how it have transferred to be. And I'm saying that this is a very important part of the success. I would claim that it is a very important part of the success of any project because it is a full local community engagement. People are feeling it is affecting their life. It is not just a, just a park which will be affecting and I could take my kids too, but it is a whole project which is helping my house to be renovated, my house to be in a better uh, living standard, and it will increase by all mean my well-being. That is how many of the local residents have uh, perceived the whole project. Again, you could see how it was um, changing. But also to be very realistic, um, you could see that those buildings which were very near to the Ayyubid wall have taken the privilege of the restoration. In that time, Aga Khan uh, project, especially 2004, maybe almost to 2010, was funding almost 70 to 80% of the renovation of the houses. And around 20% the government, the Egyptian government was contributing. However, if I'm not mistaken by numbers, however, that percentage have decreased by time because um, the funding became more focused on maintenance. So the Elka Can be project, pro, uh, sorry, fund uh, decreased its support, which unfortunately have made um, that ambitious um, project to transfer um, almost, if I'm not mistaken, one to 1.5, uh, uh, sorry, one kilometer of a Darb Lahmar houses to be fully renovated, to be still um, number of houses which could be counted, I think less than 100 houses. However, still that effect have had a huge impact on the local community. Um, the street, uh, Shoglan School, which was, as you could see, fully deserted place, have been transferred to be a community community center in the same time Aga Khan uh, project uh, 
sorry, Aga Khan uh, Project Administration Center, if you would say. Um, and that is, from my point of view, a very uh, successful usage of building, which unfortunately now such buildings are destroyed in Egypt. So it was technically saving that historical um, air on the architecture uh, masterpiece. The community transportation, uh, sorry, the community development process was uh, extremely beneficial and very, very unique in Egypt, as you know, um, being uh, a bit of a top down approach in our governance. Um, it have created, generated jobs to uh, communities. The community feels that they are heard. Uh, architects and landscape uh, designers have um, at least um, communicated, in, especially in terms of um, renovation of, of the houses with the local residents. Um, maybe the concept of the park, they didn't be, have been involved in it, which might be also um, a point which could be considered in the future, but maybe because of the circumstances of the project, but especially with the renovation, as you know, in the Arab culture, you cannot renovate, and in any culture, but you cannot renovate someone's house without their permission. Um, um, even if you can force them, but when you are engaging them, the factor of success doubled or tripled. Sorry. So part of that community engagement, they have created a community center where uh, local um, local residents could sell their um, their goods, if you would say. They have created a kindergarten, uh, a traditional arts development center, and a clinic. That is how the whole project transferred to be a whole, as I was mentioning, a sustainability project, helping the community helping history or preserving history, and at the same time, increasing um, the green space in Cairo. Some of the artifacts, which was furniture making, traditional tiles, the uh, silver uh, work and copper work, very famous in Egypt, and decorative ceiling, they have used the um, local resident skills to actually renovate their own houses and work within the park itself. And that have created sort of a small market for that underprivileged um, neighborhood. From my point of view, um, one of uh, any any project have to have um, if it claim to be sustainable, it need to be connected to social, economic, and environmental factors. In terms of the social sustainability factors. As I was mentioning, it have generated commercial activities to residents. It have created better standards of living, which have decreased actually the crime rates in that neighborhood significantly for at least a number of years. But because political situation in Egypt and lots of economic crisis that might have changed it nowadays. Um, green spaces, a uh, green recreation space, which attract businesses, of course. Tourism have been... Uh, Actually, El Azhar, Bank, El Azhar Park became actually a tourist destination after a while, and it have created almost uh, 3,000 um, visitors daily and around 14,000 visitors, especially during Ramadan months. Unfortunately, that will not happen in the next uh, week because of the COVID-19 crisis. And those numbers uh, are just estimate. It have increased uh, rapidly. In terms of the environmental sustainability factors, um, the man-made uh, the man-made lake uh, have added a huge uh, beauty uh, feature, and of course, as you know, uh, it was using the irrigation system and some of the water from the reservoirs. Um, uh, there was no loss of water resources, especially as you know, Egypt have uh, huge water problems. Um, being a lung, a green lung in the heart of polluted Cairo. Uh, of course, is uh, priceless, and as well the whole irrigation system, uh, putting into consideration our very very hot dry weather. Although it is changing a bit with climate change, but still, it is very hot dry weather with um, almost zero to maybe two percent of rain annually. 
However, if we are looking at the future, we need to look at future needs. Um, and that future need, um, I have looked at uh, Lazar Park and just many times. Uh, the paper uh, I have created almost 10 years ago, but in the same time, I, I visited almost whenever I go back home. And one of the main factors that um, the lack of funding from Aga Khan uh, uh, fund could actually have huge impact on the maintenance of the park. So you need the self-sustained financial resources to make such a project successful and sustainable in the future. You have to have an independent management board, at least in that case, in Egyptian context, because as you know, governmental authorities and sometimes um, create um, or have lots of limitations, if I would say. Um, and in the same time, for a number of years, um, the whole idea of having lots of Egyptians from different social classes entering into that park was a huge benefit. So there was, uh, I think, a proposal five years or three years ago to increase the fees um, to uh, admission fees to entering the park, and I think it have increased. And any further increase in that will actually exclude and make exclusion for number of social classes in Egypt, especially with our economic crisis, which could be deepened, unfortunately, by COVID-19. And one of the main needs and factors, it needs to continue the community development of the surrounding neighborhoods, such as El Darb al -Ahmar. In the other hand, future threats, uh, <laughs> it have been, you could see the photo, the place have been turned to be a swimming pool a bit. But um, because of lack of similar public pools, you can blame people for, uh, and sometimes misusing that, if it is considered misusing. Uh, in the, at the end, it is a public park, and you have the public freedom to use it as long as you are not um, affecting any um, anyone uh, needs. There was the main future threat was absence of interaction with local community. If we lose that, increasing the entrance fee, if the government take full uh, control of the park, which was till now sort of a unique situation where Aga can have a bit of influence, but not a huge influence. Um, and of course, lack of funding. So that the last thing we want is for such a project to be converted to some of our old parks, which is hugely suffering. Uh, as a recommendation, and I'm almost done with my presentation, I hope uh, everyone had a uh, knowledgeable time, is that I think the recipe would be dedication plus adequate funding. Uh, of course, dedication is a strong political will. Funding creative management and creative solutions preservation of local culture and the upgrading of community conditions and a true effective community participation, a true bottom-up approach, actually equal a sustainable project such as Al Azhar Mosque, uh, sorry, Al Azhar Park. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, I hope you all stay safe. I know situation in Jordan is much better than other places, but I know across Europe and uh, and US, uh, people are having tough time. However, uh, hope hoping that the future will be more brighter than those days. And at the end, uh, happy Easter and uh, Ramadan Karim, hopefully in three days. Thanks so Thank much you. for your time. Thank you, uh, Dr. Karim, uh, for this really important and insightful lecture. Uh, I will leave the floor now uh, to Professor Kamen to comment on your presentation. Then I will open the floor for any question or comment from our uh, who are joining us. Professor Kamen, uh, I may give you the... Sure. Dr. Karim, thank you for a pleasant lecture. Thanks. Uh, Al Azhar Al Park is one of the leading uh, parks in the Mediterranean, and it's an example of 
reconstruction of a place where it's a dump ground for years and years of dumping grounds in Egypt. But to clear a few things, this project started with the concept where Sasaki, Aga Khan called Sasaki Associates and called Abdel Halim Ibrahim, Abdel Halim Ibrahim and Ali Jabbar, the Aga Khan Commission, sorry, Abdel Halim Ibrahim and Ali Jabbar at the beginning to come up with the historic studies of developing that park. Uh -huh. But due to the value that Abdul Halim Ibrahim, because he takes Abdul Wahid, sorry, Al Wakil, Asif, Abdul Wahid Al Wakil, I am sorry, and uh, Ali Jabbar, but because he takes a lot of effort, the Aga Khan went back after the studies and commissioned work with other people, and that, that's why they went with Suhair Farid and Rami Dahan to develop oh, yeah. the architecture. And then Maharistino, which is Site. And Site is one of a prominent landscape design firm in the Middle East. Yep. Uh, site engineering firm. Leila Al Masri and Maharistino. Lelia is the wife of Maharistino. And Maharistino is one of the few considered best landscape architects in the region, too, and in MENA. And uh, about three months ago, he was awarded Life Achievement Award in Dubai. I was there. We got the same award. But the issue with this al Azhar Park is not the commitment of what the Aga Khan did, but actually the intelligence of the team that worked. There was about nine professors and specialists in botany uh, and architects and designers and irrigation designers uh, they have developed a beautiful scheme, but the concept behind the park is revitalization of this old part of Cairo because it looks over the cemetery, the old cemetery and the Mamluk park. But the best thing I've been into the park several times because in 2007 to 2011, I was going on and off to Cairo because I designed uh, Rihanna. Uh, complex next 6th of October, a housing uh, complex. But the nice thing is the concept behind it where you should, from that restaurant, have the spine to outlook a lookout of an expansive view to see Qal'at Muhammad Ali al Jami al And the other expansive from that major axis is the axis, which is the entrance axis that leads to the old Mamluk. Mamluk design. But this project, the golden part of this project, I hope you agree, it's the impact that Park left on the restoration and revitalization of the urban old part of next to the walls. That's where historic preservation, this is a masterpiece. The other part is that in Cairo, though it is per even per square foot or whatever it is, the landscape, but still the masterpiece of this place is not the hard landscape, it's the soft landscape because it's a botanical garden, which means under every tree and shrub and plant, there is a scientific name. This is a beautiful place to be, and I think it's open to public. The Egyptians don't pay anything. We paid maybe one jinnah wahad or something, I'm not sure, yeah. but I think it's a good place and it revives the whole urban pocket of that place. You should be commended in your work and I think you've done a good job. Thank you uh, for, because we, and I speak about architects and designers and planners, we have little respect for the concept of landscape architecture and our designs. We tend to design structures and have places and plazas and piazzas and we forget the value of a landscape design. That's why this park, and there's another park, it's not similar to that, but it's called the Shahid Park in Kuwait. It's designed by Spanish architects. Unfortunately, most of the places we have designed, as you said, comes out either from French or from European influence. Lately, it's American, British, or Malaysian Far East Asia designing urban places or waterfronts with minimal intervention of 
uh, leading, uh, and this brings me to a, a small, nice job which was done by uh, Abdul Halim Ibrahim, a park he did for the kids' playgrounds in Egypt a few years ago. Um, they were instrumental. And I think, and I have to say that Egyptian architects, some of them have led a good work in the Middle East as well as in Cairo, as well as there are some leading architects in the Arab world. We have lost Rifat Shadirji, Jadirji lately, but we have, God bless his uh, uh, soul, Ja'far Toqan, and I hope that Rasim Badran of Jordan, who's a leading architect, and they are Aga Khan Award winners, by the way, uh, because in 1990, the Aga Khan unit at the University of Jordan, where I was chairing the department, we established an Aga Khan unit for four years. They have done instrumental, but also why the Aga Khan dominated this to Cairo and put uh, that place. Mishan al-Ta'ifil Ismaili. It's because of an Ismaili sect. He devoted that money, but it came for the best of Cairo. Thank you, sir. You've done a good job. Uh, I have listened to a few lectures about that park, but your lecture is a, a beautiful one. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much. For Thanks so much. And I think I, I totally 100% agree with you, Professor Campbell, especially with a point about how it has uh, made a standpoint for the revitalization of Islamic Cairo, which for unfortunately years and years have been neglected um, due to lots of reasons, as uh, you know. And I hope um, and really hope even with the economic crisis, which all of our countries are, are facing that in the future we are taking such projects and uh, using our local capabilities to build on that. One more, one more. I have to correct. First, they commissioned the other Khan Abdul Wahid al Wakil. Then Abdul Wahid al Wakil takes a lot of time, and then they took that and gave it to Abdul Halim Ibrahim and Sasaki Associates. And all That's that research, and then Abdul Wah, Abdul Halim Ibrahim and Sasaki left the project and then Sasaki Associates took it by themselves. So the credit of that project goes to several people till it reached that. We have to clear it because all the people yeah, that sure. I have mentioned are really established names. Thank you. For sure. Thanks so much for the clarification. Thank you. Thank sir. you, Professor uh, Mahadeen, for this uh, deep and insightful comments on Dr. Karim Hunter. Uh, I would like uh, to also, just before uh, uh, opening the floor for the chairman of this uh, department, just to briefly go to main points that Dr. Karim has uh, spoken about. He talked about the uh, different dimensions of sustainability. He emphasized the importance of community engagement in terms of achieving the social dimension or the social pillar of sustainability. He also uh, uh, gave us uh, a brief about what is the main environmental uh, interventions that in order to fight the pollution, the air pollution, and in the, uh, in the park and the gray water recycling uh, to, uh, for the irrigations. Uh, lately, he talked about the economical dimension and how the engagement of the community has uh, opened up and established many new businesses for the local community. Uh, that's uh, the general outline of uh, and what makes the Al-Azhar Park as a sustainable project, successful sustainable project. I will just open now the if the floor for the chairman. If uh, Dr. Yasser, if you have any comment, please, could you just come forward? OK, uh, th thank you, uh, our esteemed lecturer, uh, Dr. Thank Karim. You. Um, I really don't have anything to add other than what has been shared, especially by uh, my colleague, Professor Kamil. This is a very, this was really a very insightful uh, uh, lecture about a very important uh, project, and you were really able to navigate us through its complexity. And this, this uh, project is special. It's a comprehensive project. You know, it's not only about design, it's about urban design, it's about landscape design, and once and foremost, it's about community development. 
So exactly. you, you managed to put all of these things together in such a presentation. Uh, I think that was really, uh, gives, uh, speaks for you, you know, as, as a researcher. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And on a personal note, you know, this is also uh, a place that is dear to me because this is the land of my uncles. So uh, you are really uh, reconnecting me with a place where my mother lived and where she's, uh, where her ancestors are, are buried. They are buried there, you know, around, around that area. Um, uh, I, I really would, would like to, our students and our uh, participants really to engage uh, more and hear, hear from them. And I'm sure they have a lot of questions and, and a lot of comments. I will leave Claudine in order to manage the questions. Uh, but uh, May, there is a question from one of our audience, Mervat uh, Habush, asking about, is there any management plan uh, regarding of the community engagement? Uh, how you can structure the community engagement process in public parks? Uh, also, after following that, we will have our distinguished and uh, most uh, known uh, architect Ayman Zaytar, he would have also another question. I will uh, open the floor after you answer the question regarding the structure of the community engagement plan. Thank you. Sure. Thanks so much. And thank, uh, thanks, Dr. Sakr. And uh, you are more than welcome to go to your course, second home, anytime, um, especially in Ramadan. Uh, it's beautiful there. Uh, in terms of um, answering this question, um, I would say public participation, especially community uh, participation, was a tricky part in most of our projects. Um, we never, uh, in terms of planning in Egypt, uh, as many other uh, um, Arab countries, we have, uh, residents have uh, that fear that whenever there is a new project, it will be actually affecting them um, negatively. And that create a psychological barrier, if you would say. Uh, I think the difference that, and the, as Professor uh, Kamil have um, highlighted, um, is that the local team um, from local volunteers, uh, I have seen some of them through the years, and also um, from uh, brilliant, you would say, community facilitators and uh, community leaders who have uh, preached and created a bit of bridges between, or you would say, created trust between the project team, I'm talking about the whole project team, uh, and local residents. A very um, successful example as well, uh, I would refer to the whole restoration of um, um, the uh, Masr al-Qadima, or the religion complex in uh, uh, Amr ibn al-As area. Um, it have been I'm, I'm sorry, I could I could send to Dr. Zaid uh, the name of uh, the brilliant architect, um, but she sure. have done, yeah, she have done amazing, uh, a very similar approach, and have uh, dealt with a very unique area such as um, um, the religion complex in the heart of Islamic Cairo, uh, with the same concept, early engagement, creating connection to community leaders gaining trust through, and sometimes years and years, taking every single individual case, and that we have seen her, she have presented in our, um, uh, in our faculty, and she was talking to resident by resident, and sometimes she was always li almost living there in some of, uh, in that project. So it is a very, very similar situation to what have happened in uh, El Azhar Park. And I think engagement was especially our uh, local communities and especially in the lower socio-ecological, uh, sorry, socio-socio-economic uh, classes need lots and lots of time and lots and lots of trust building, and that's yes. how it will be uh, effective. I hope I have mm -hmm. answered. Uh, yes, yeah, it's all about building the social capital mm -hmm. and the social capital mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, I repeat my comment, it's all about building the social capital and the cultural capital as the main infrastructure of uh, community engagement and community participation in urban planning or urban development project. Uh, I may give the floor now to uh, architect Ayman Zaytar. Could you please uh, 
Mr. Ayman, start asking your question. Yeah, Assalamu uh, alaikum, Jamian. Wa alaikum, Assalam. Shukran, Dr. Karim, on the Muhadar al Mutaza, Hakikatan. And I'm actually a man who is not a Arabi, I better come in with Arabi, will never fall in uh, well, I, uh, we can ask uh, Claudine to translate if, uh, if you could. No, I can. No, no, I can't. But I forgot. In, في معنى يعني مش non Arabic speaker. Yeah, I, think, I think there is uh, some people from, uh, okay. yeah, from non Arabic yeah. speaker. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor Karim, for the <laughs> very important <laughs> talk. حقيقة, and I like the, uh, mostly the your feeling, your the, this social responsibility spirit which you talk with. Uh, uh, in this project, my, my, my first little question is: yani, who, who was the master plan? Yani, who sets the master plan? Assassin? Is it Maher Stino? Is it uh, before I go into my next question? I think Professor Kamel could answer that much better than me. Sasaki and Abdul Halim, Abdul Halim Ibrahim, and Sasaki Associates. They were the instrumentals of uh, of uh, providing the master plan. Well, okay, okay, thank you, thank you, Dr. Kamel. Uh, I, Karim, I visited the Azhar Park, يمكن من عشر سنوات. Ten years ago, I visited the uh, a friend took me to the Azhar Park, and it was really a surprise for me. I, mean, I didn't expect this in the middle of of on that hill to see all this park. يعني of course we enjoyed it but I had a certain feeling at that time which really came back to me when you showed your last slide when I want your opinion on that yes. when we walked in the Adhas Park and, and we went to the Hill restaurant designed by our friend Rami Dahan which uh, at that time I felt that there are uh, I, 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 I'm trying to express myself in a clear uh, way. Uh, uh, can you see your face? Yes. What? Uh, we need to see your face. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, at that time, we were walking in the, in the park along that axis, and when we went to the uh, Hill restaurant, okay, <laughs> I felt that I went to somewhere else. To yeah. somewhere, keep down luck. It's way selective. Yeah. yeah. It's not. It's not a public. It's. It's very for the few who could afford that expensive restaurant. Yes. I felt there is a, a certain unseen segregation at that uh, in that hill. Yeah. It's not for you if you don't have enough money. You cannot go into that uh, luxurious uh, restaurant. That was the feeling which I really now uh, felt again with your last slide when you showed the kids swimming in the pool. They are enjoying the pool, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. on the hill there is that that piece of uh, architecture, the that uh, selective, uh, uh, sterilized, uh, yeah. socially sterilized piece of, of of place. You know what I mean. I wish, from maybe from the lessons learned, I feel there, there is the, there is the gap there. There, there was some this place which is isolated from the, from the, from the normal public. العاديين الناس العاديين يعني. Yeah, what do you think? Of course, of course. Thanks for a very, very correct and I would say straight to the point comment. Unfortunately, um, especially with the administration sometimes of the park, um, the segregation is very clear um, for middle uh, middle class Egyptians, to be honest. Um, it is a bit, uh, you need to have a budget to enter a bit of the hell restaurant, which creates that exclusive experience. And I think that happened because, um, relating to the earlier um, question from uh, Mervet uh, about lack of business plan for the park. So the whole um, segregation became really clear. Um, Egypt, technically, if I, if I put it in more, um, in more holistic way, Egypt with its classes could be seen 
through a simple visit to Lazar Park, where you will see lower um, socioeconomic uh, socio uh, class of Egyptian and middle class Egyptian enjoying the free parts of the park, if I would say. The few point, which is their ultimate uh, experience, looking at the whole of Islamic Cairo, the whole spine, but very, very limited number of uh, the park users, I'm talking about the middle class and lower uh, class, going to those two restaurants, which, as uh, you, were, you were saying, unfortunately creates that segregation feelings. But I think it was more related to the administration of the project, and that, of course, affect the sustainability of the project rather than the actual design of the project. Because I, if I'm not mistaken, design was more idealistic in terms of creating a full public park in the heart of Cairo. But admin, as I was saying, and the influence of different factors and different even businessmen have affected a bit parts of the administration. But thanks for the comment. So this is a lesson learned, I think, Michelle. Definitely, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Ayman, for this uh, straightforward. I will open the floor now for Yazan Mahadeen. He is the son of Professor Kamal Mahadeen. He leads uh, the Associate Landscape Architect in Urdun. تحياتي جميعا انا اول شيء تحياتي للدكتور ياسر صقر والمهندس ايمن والدكتور زايد والدكتور كامل طبعا تفضل انا بس بدي احكي بالعربي ويمكن حتى كمان لو صح لي بالمصري دكتور كريم شكرا جزيلا على المحاضره دكتور كريم شكرا جزيلا على المحاضره انا خريج جامعه القاهره شكرا جزيلا وعشت خمس سنين في القاهره ومش بس هيك المحاضرة رجعتني لأيام اللي عشتها في القاهرة أنا بس بدي أعلق شوية تعليقات يعني إن كان ل... لأنه زي ما حكى الدكتور كامل الأغا خان أول إشي حكت مع عبد الواحد الوكيل وأخذت الأيديز وبعدين فور شام ريزن ما كملوا بعدين عبد الحليم إبراهيم مع ساساكي وبعدين وزعوا الشغل اللي دخل مهندس رامي الدهان وزوجته شهير فريد او ماهر ستينو والدكتور علي المصري وكلهم اساتذتنا اللي بنقدرهم وبنحترمهم واللي تعلمنا منهم في مصر. آه هذا المشروع وفي مشاريع غيره في العالم زي ما حولوا الديث افنيو في نيويورك للهاي لاين زي ما حولوا هذا خلينا نحكي مكب النفايات الى بارك شيء يعني زي ما بقولوا اتس ا سكسس ستوري شيء مفخره مش بس هيك انا بتذكر هذا السايت كنا نزوره كثير احنا والشباب وسبيشلي في الاعياد وكان دائما مليء في الناس وخصوصا بعد صلاه العيد آه وإله استخدامات كثير كبيره وحول المنطقه الى يعني انا بتذكر في مرات نفوت يا زلمه يا زلمه بسرعه المقاطعه بتقدر بالانجليزي بس ما تعجز يعني اور اودينس يعني ويل فولو يور ما في مشكلة. important comment. Yes. So I just uh, told the, the people here that I graduated from Cairo University and I have visited the park many times when I was there. And uh, the most important thing that uh, you can go and watch the human behavior. I remember I visited the park many times in the Eid, you know, after Ramadan or in Eid al Adha, and you can see all the people how they. Uh, look at birds, how they can move into the park, how they sit together in, the, in some enclosure spaces and deal with the park. Because it's very important in our, in our field, in landscape architecture, to study the human behavior. Yes. And when we design a park, we don't just design for users, for human beings. We, we design for birds for but butterflies we we designed it's an ecosystem and it's a, it's it's related to the ecology and if you go back and look how the people worked with the topography and the contours and the views there it's unbelievable it's a wonderful part thank you dr karim i just want to to thank you again for this lecture it took me back to cairo and thank you, and thanks goes to the American University of Madaba for such an initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mohandas. Uh, 
Uh, any questions from our beloved students in the session? Uh, just quickly, I, I would like to thank also Engineer yeah. Yazan, Shukran Gazilan, who Taban Baladek Tani, Masr. You are more than welcome, and everyone, of course. Uh, and uh, I'm totally agreeing with the whole idea of especially ecological system. My specialization now is socio-ecological resilience. So I could relate um, on how it have really impacted the well-being. And you could see how people, especially those um, youngsters and from especially Darba Rahmar neighborhood, and how they could enjoy a huge and a magnificent piece of art, if you would say, nearby their doorsteps which is a privilege which, as you know, with uh, social classes in Egypt is uh, related only to few people. Um, uh, so I think that uh, contribution and its effect on environment have impacted uh, heavily on that. All right, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Karim. Uh, I'll just give the space now to uh, any of our students if they have any questions. Any question from students? Our guest, else? Or anybody would like to ask? I, will, I want, uh, Zaid, I want to go back on designing this uh, park. When we designed exactly, park, yeah, we the, the main reason of having uh, those architects, Samit Dahan, or Samir, or Majmu'a, who worked is to have these two restaurants. And I've been to two restaurants. I really didn't like the upper one. I like the one on the lake down. But Michan, Achi, Ayman, Ulikhwan, there are three, four varieties of kiosks now, and free tenders are allowed in that park. And this concern that they go to the park, they go to the restaurant, they go to the restaurant, but the main reason they did this to generate income for that park, by the way. With the knowledge, I did that there would be that much restaurants in parks. Parks are parks. Parks are a place where you just eat light things or light chubby uh, samoa, not even sandwiches or snacks. But in the culture, we go to parks and we bring the food we take, we take the magnuba, Usually parks are for educational purposes. And this is one of the reasons of Al-Azhar Park. Al-Azhar Park was an educational uh, urban park for Egypt go and read and look and students work as i agree i think the idea of having these fancy restaurants are really not uh, not to the best use of parks even in europe and in the states you don't find this you don't find fancy restaurants you find fancy snacks a shaheed park you have seen it in kuwait you don't have restaurants you have a coffee an espresso a place where you could have gahwa shai and things like that but I think this is the notion. Unfortunately, in Jordan, we have failed. And being Jordan's first landscape architect, and I have a practice, I managed to design parks, other parts in Jordan, but we were not successful of creating just a park, a mimni park. And in 10 years, we fill it with buildings. Even when they design a Ligwesme park, which is a major park, it's end up a structured place, which means art landscape, and it's not well done yet, because the designers have led the project. And this is sad in our part of the world. Really, we rarely respect parks. Thank you again, Chief. You have enriched my life today, because my life is the good landscape architecture. I always say made me a better architect. I still love it, and I will love it, and I adore it, but it's a good and the Egyptians did a good job, but everybody should know something. Egypt has, Cairo, has more than 62 parks till now. From the 20s and the 30s and the 40s up till now, they still, they still, they are the first to have a botanical garden. They are the first to have a zoo in the Arab world. Unfortunately, they are below standards in preserving them, but up till now, I've been to some before last year and the year before. They're still functioning. They're, people go there. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much, Professor.
Um, uh, um, I have a comment. Actually, it's a it's an invitation for um, more specialized discussion on design, where I would like um, um, uh, I, uh, my friend Ayman Zaitar and Professor Kamil to join in. Um, my comment is has to do um, with the uh, the way how uh, the um, design of the park landscape, the uh, planning aspect of it, dealt with history. Uh, you kept uh, uh, re referencing the design to Islamic architecture. Okay, and uh, you cited a uh, few references um, from whether from uh, uh, Islamic Cairo and from uh, Islamic architecture in Spain as primary sources. Uh, actually, um, I would say uh, perhaps the artificial design uh, of those, especially of those restaurants, uh, had more to do with, uh, you know, reinterpretation of, of uh, Andalusian artichar more than the um, design, uh, uh, more than the master plan. The master plan, although few stylistic features, uh, especially of fountains, can be related to uh, to Spain, but they, they are mostly, and this is what I find it more, most sophisticated, uh, most fascinating to me, they are reinterpreting re uh, uh, references from wider uh, geograph geographic areas, especially especially the Mughal gardens in, uh, in India, where, uh, you know, uh, the scale of landscaping was a scale of urban parks, as opposed, you know, to small enclosed uh, uh, gardens as were in Spain or Andalusia. So this manipulation of uh, big of uh, vistas and uh, the distribution and use of water uh, features to frame uh, uh, monuments and uh, establish uh, really very well calibrated walkways um, along uh, big distances was a feature of, or was a contribution by the imperial uh, uh, dynasties in, 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 uh, in uh, uh, East Asia, uh, notably, uh, notably uh, 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 Iran and, and, uh, and India. And this, and this is what I think really um, most successful about this uh, this uh, design, uh, this park, is that the way how the planners and landscapers, they were really more creative than the architects who planned, who designed specific buildings, including my friend uh, uh, Ramid, Ramid Ahan, who was a little bit more historicist, more revivalist, as opposed to the uh, landscape architects who were more creative in reinterpreting history and uh, really presenting it in a contemporary fashion that really uh, 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 that integrated and established uh, a symbiosis between traditional references and contemporary practices, which was really successfully laid out. And, and, and I think this is, um, as uh, Dr. Ka uh, Professor Kamil uh, uh, hinted, I think the uh, credit should be given to a uh, few people about uh, this who were instrumental in uh, in putting together master plan. Most notably, uh, my dear friend and companion, uh, Professor Abdul Harib Ibrahim, may God, uh, um, uh, in these conditions, in these times, uh, really uh, help him deal with uh, with his uh, 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 medical conditions. So, and I I put this remark, you know. Uh, for discussion. Okay. I do agree, but there is a concept of this Islamic architecture I'd like to talk about. Islamic architecture is divided into eight regions in the world. Though we share certain conceptual things, but the architectural vocabulary changes from one place to another place. What they have failed, though it's not a mishap, that in Al Azhar Park, they have not employed any of the Egyptian language of the historic layers of the history of Cairo and the history of Egypt, 
which is in the Arab world and the Islamic culture, showed out how they fought the Mughals and the Tatar, or how they fought from Cairo going to Egypt. I think we have failed in that concept. But despite all, it was the first architectural landscape design that came out to reality. But I know why they, it came out in that manner. Because Abdul Wahid, Al Wakil, and Abdul Halim, if they have, if they have continued with the other guys, Rami and the others, they, it would have been a more successful designers. Secondly, about the history, yes, I think in the States and Europe, there are historic parks and there are urban pockets and neighborhoods. In some areas like this, I do agree that the history of the nation and the history of should be displaced and dispatched in such projects because it revives the culture. And you see this in some parts of the Europe. Unfortunately, the trend moving into having modernized urban vocabulary because landscape architects, in general, they follow the trend of the architectural profession. That's, you can see it in the well-known architects of landscape architects in the 21st century. They are following the architectural trend of the movements. And you can see that in Martha Schwartz's work as a landscape architect. In the Highland Park, it's modern. They have, though it's an outstanding project, the Highland Park, which is a railroad, an old one, lifted. It's about two kilometers and it revised, but they have not employed any of the historic fabrics. It came like a, a, a angular line over this strip uh, and devoted to, it became a botanical exhibition area more than a park where it's related to the historic part of New York. But I, this is my feeling. When you're dealing with a historic place or an important park, Within the region, you should have employed that. That's why we're talking about Jordan. La Hadaq al Malik Abdullah, Walla Hadaq al Malik Hassan, Walla Ayman Hadaqna, Walla Hadiqa Tat al Hashimi, Walla even the park that I have designed in Erbil have followed that theme. We came up from certain concepts that demanded, demanded from the sites or other factors. On the contrary, I think we should go back and restate the historic uh, part. But Elijah Park, the nice thing you, you should focus about, I don't know, there was some, uh, some I, I will dispatch to some of the groups later, how many plants were planted and how many groups of plants, more than 800 or 1,500 plant species were planted of native Egypt and the upper portions of Egypt, which is Cairo and its surrounding the Poncianas, the ground covers. Also the credit of how dealing the contour lines and how they protected the, the contour lines by ground covers of the slopes overlooking the Mamluk uh, wall. Uh, this is in a brief for Yasser debate and I think it's an important debate because all what we see, ah, I have to bring something. Hayy Safarat, Rasim Badran when he did Hayy Safarat and they developed some work with some landscape architects. The concept was a lot of historic and cultural regionalism. Now we talk about regionalist landscapes. We're not only talking about historic, but you should have the impact of regionalist elements of landscape architecture. And this is important. That's why we have seen in the works of some of our architects, Ammar Khamash, Ayman Zaytar, uh, 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 Rasim Badran, they have this nostalgia, and that's a credit. It's a major credit for those guys. Taking back to the roots, to the reality, to the cultural identity, uh, to the Arab identity, to the Islamic architectural identity, which we which is fading. It's fading all over the Arab world, especially in the modern parts, or what we call it in the Emirates, uh, or if, if we call it maybe Saudi Arabia to a certain degree have successfully. And this brings me to an idea in Aqaba or Sharm sheikh or Ghardaqa. And some people criticize me of this, go with the flow. And they call this Fatimite architecture. Fatimite architecture. No, it's not. It's mimic of. It's not. It's mimic of. You don't take an arch or a dome and say this is Islamic architecture. It's the spirit of the space and the aroma that was created by these spaces. Thank you, guys.
معنا المهندس ايمن في عنده كومنت احنا طبعا بنعتذر منك دكتور كريم اذا طولنا عليك لكن احنا اكيد انا مستمتع وبتعلم من الدسكشن اتس ماي بليز ثانك يو فيري مهندس ايمن تفضل اذا في عندك كومنت مهندس ايمن زعيتر ايمن ايمن يو نيد ان ميوت يا بليز يعني ذكر دكتور كامل يعني معلومات مهمه وعن واقعنا اللي هو واقعنا بالاربن باركس بعمان ويمكن نوع من الفشل اللي حكى عنه دكتور كامل له اسباب عديده برايي يمكن اسباب اداريه اسباب وعي أسباب المهم يعني فتح جروح دكتور وانا الي يعني اذا صار فرصه دكتور رياس دعاني لا احاضر بالمجمع الكريم تبعكم عن تجربتي بالاربن ديزاين هذا طبعا ايمن كان سبيك انجلش عفوا كان سبيك انجلش اه يا يا اوكي دكتور كامل آه يعني I think your comment is valid concerning the uh, the Azhar Park planning, and I think Dr. Yasser's uh, comments are valid too. And from my visit, I was really impressed with the landscape design, personally, especially with the detailing. You know, the sensitivity with the material, the tiling, uh, the proportions. Uh, if you go on this micro micro scale, uh, it is really good. I think this is the best part, to me at least, uh, in the park. Uh, the way the details were done, the materials, the the patterns on the left key. And uh, concerning the the reference to to Islamic gardens, يعني هي مش بس أندلسيا زي ما ذكروا. It was in Asia too, in Iran. Uh, and and I have to comment on Dr. Kamel's uh, comment that yes, we we have to care for the regional. بس هذا هو ان انبريسيدنتد اكسبيرينس يعني اتس ا هيوج هيل ذات يو هاف تو ديزاين سو يو ار دينج وذ 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 ا نيو اي ثينك ا نيو سيتويشن اي نو اف اي دونت نو اف اي ام رايت اور اي ام رونج ان ان كايرو ذات ذات از ا يونيك سيتويشن وير يو هاف ذس هيوج سبيس تو ديل وذ از ا بلانينج سو يو هاف تو كم اب وذ ا سوليوشن تو ذات It reminds me of the Maidan in Isfahan, Maidan al-Shah, that huge space in the middle of the city, of the old city, which was, or at the periphery maybe, which was, this is an exception in, in Islamic uh, planning, the Maidan, that huge space. And next to it, adjacent to it, are the, the gardens of the Shah, which were also based on, on long water channels. So it's, uh, I think it's a complex situation. It's, you know, I can't say that this is a, I think it's a good project. It has uh, good, good parts in it. This is debatable, the idea of regional is debatable and sensitive and, and it's related to many aspects. My, my, my question so to you Kim, is that the, the renovation, I think the best part of the project is the discovery of the Ayubid wall and the renovation of the, uh, <laughs> The houses, <laughs> the pool. Yeah. That was really good. يعني I think يمكن البركة is there. But my was that just a thin belt? Just was that just a thin layer just to give a nice? Or was it real? I mean, there is depth. No, I think. I mean, to be honest, thanks for the comments and for I'm I'm really learning. Um, from comments from Professor Cameron, from you, Dr. Uh, Yasser, and from you, uh, architect Ayman. Um, in terms of answering your question, I think, unfortunately, part of it, I mean, the the whole changing and sometimes in funding, and especially that is related to a bit of the economic economic aspect of it. Uh, Darb Lahmar re, uh, neighborhood, I, if I'm not mistaken, approximately had almost at least 150,000 residents, uh, part of a huge Cairo, if I'm not mistaken by the numbers. Um, and the whole idea of, I would say the, the, the surroundings of the project to be 
as beautiful and as uh, renovated as possible had an effect. If if you go around almost 500 to 600 meters in the depths of Darb al-Ahmar, unfortunately, um, those renovated buildings are less and less. That is, I think, from my perspective, and I might be wrong, but I think it was mainly one a economic problem in terms of the funding, but also an administration problem because uh, municipality and they have been all for Masr, they all enter into that space because it is related to their authority. And the local government, unfortunately, in many cases, create more problems than solutions, if I would say. So that has affected a bit um, the full renovation of it, if I would say. Um, but on the other hand, even with the little part which have been done, especially the community center, especially the economic influence in the a neighborhood that is in itself, as you were saying, an unprecedented experience. Plus, of course, the ecological part, which uh, yourself and Professor Campbell have highlighted. So. Yeah, Doctor, may I uh, have a comment? that those innovations, لازم كان يكونوا catalyst and to to generate more innovations, صح? They are. They are. They are generating more. There are now 35 buildings by that wall is under development and restoration is a fact of life in that part. And this is a credibility because at the beginning I said the best thing of this park, because it's a huge, not only at the ground of reviving a place and mm. conserving the land, but it is the, the, the impact that it did on uh, Cairo. People are restoring and uh, uh, renting the places, and the offices are getting uh, higher. They are getting higher rents, you know, and this is nice. I think maybe yeah. Professor Camel, I'm coming from a bit of an idealistic perspective, where as as an as an Egyptian, I want actually most of the Darb Lahmar to be like those. But as you are saying, it is it is a catalyst. However, it need also. Uh, more support from a whole governmental perspective as true. well. It's true. To, it's true. But in to, the Arab world, yeah. this is our habit. But look at the Allah al Fatimi. I've been there eight years ago. It has been renovated. And they've done a good yeah. job in the restoration of that part because we have huge, we have not a priority for historic preservation or plantation or the protection of our urban environment. We don't. It's not a priority. I was an official at one time. I planted 250 species in Aqaba. And there was the best example up till now, till Aqaba, which is Shari al Hammamat al Tunisia. When 2012 I came, the water feature was down. That was designed by Sanabil. It was designed by Ayman Zaitar and Sanabil Razan Zaitar. It was a beautiful project up till now. It's the mostly heavily. And then they made Darb 1 and we finished Darb 2. But this is an urban area when you need the best part of that place. It's not the historic part of it. No, it's the natural setup of this urban linear uh, about 900 meters in length. It's the space, it's the, the two-dimensional space that you feel the richness of the place. And I think we don't have respect for plants. We don't have respect for birds. We don't have respect for preserving our... Look at our villages. Dur al-Khalil, the Samar al-Karak, the Samar. We are deserting. We did Dana. We renovated Dana in Jordan, but we have left it. But look at Aswan. Look what you have when you go through the boat in Aswan on both sides. The richness of the Nubian mosques. I am doing some sketching of these Cairo mosques. It's, it's unbelievable the richness of knowing the scale and the effort of those people. I think reviving our history is important to respect the culture. And we take it for granted, unfortunately. Thank you. Dr. Fima Jar Amal, comment? Uh, may I ask a question from, uh, let's say, the construction management uh, lens? 
Dr. Karim, you uh, have uh, highlighted the importance of finance. As many times the Aga Khan has stopped or decreased the finance, has affected the continuity of the project. Uh, nowadays, we there is a very important term. And this question also, I would like Dr. Kamil, as a former minister, and he knows more about the governmental procedure. There is a new trend uh, that the government in the developing and the developed world, relying more on the public-private partnership in order to provide infrastructure. We take the case of Queen Alia Airport, according to the BOOT uh, public partner, uh, public-private partnership sc uh, scheme. Jarmia uh, DC, al DC conveyance project, and we have the now the Red Dead Sea. There's many many projects that we can benefit from the private to finance our project. Why in Georgia? For example, let's take the case of the citadel uh, in the heart of Amman. The citadel is an arid area on the top of the mount, one of the highest mountains in the downtown. And there's a located uh, Umayyad Mosque as well. Why? Let's assume that we can do a public-private partnership where the, the, the private could finance the project in a 25, 20 years concession. And uh, the private could benefit from an income like having like a restaurant or a coffee shops like to, to generate an income while the public will benefit from generating a green area and a, a public space why we're we not introducing the public private partnership idea into generating and creating public parks in jordan i would like to hear your comments and your suggestions thank you is it for us or for the speaker I would like to, uh, for the speaker and for you, Dr. Kamen, about uh, as a former minister, uh, knowing the governmental procedure. Listen, listen to me. The government's fiwad, because most of the people in charge of our planning policies, they have no sense of planning policies, no sense of historic preservation. Maybe me, or Tal Birfai, or Husni Abu Ghaid, a few architects took that th these posts at one time. We don't. You don't find it. Look at Greater Amman municipality. Somebody dreams in the morning, comes up, and we're going to make a highway here. We have Juz'it al Ma'rifa wa Takhtit Mabtur. Look what Erdogan did when he was mayor of Istanbul. You know that all the parks in Istanbul were private parks, even the public. They transferred it as a concession and they gave it to the public. When Erdogan became the mayor of Istanbul, he took all the parks and made them public parks and he brought it back to the municipality. Not only that, he kept 30% of Istanbul, anybody who wants to build from the old time, about 50 years ago, to have a moratorium that it should be green pockets and it's still up till now. But there is a guy whom I know and he's a friend, his name is Qadir Tobbash. He was eight years mayor of Istanbul. He just left two years ago. He's an architect, by the way. Qadir Tubbash made outstanding public parks from the airport all the way going to old Istanbul. Look at the historic parks he made and the plazas he created. Sir, you cannot have privatization when it comes to the public domain of having a park because it's a fatal DOT. Then, as Ayman said, then you will have this segregation. You will have rich people going to the park and going to the restaurant. No yeah. admissions for parks. In the States, no admissions for parks. By the way, even the national park system, there is a minimal fee. If you go to a museum inside that or something, you can pay for that. But we have to be careful. Airpen pockets in Philadelphia or New York or in Paris or in Rome. There are 65 plazas and piazzas in Rome. Do you pay to admissions to that? Public mm. parks cannot be privatized, sir. Thank you. Okay, your comment, Dr. Karim, if you have any. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I really uh, appreciate the learning which I'm getting uh, from this lecture uh, because it, it gives me hope uh, being in New Zealand uh, and seeing part of that Western culture and having that uh, exactly what uh, the Professor Kamel is saying here in New Zealand, uh, tourism for instance is relying heavily on national parks and you have we have a huge debate about that access to parks should be free 
and the whole idea of even generating um, um, funds. funds and uh, revenue to a department such as a department which I'm working at, Department of Conservation, is a huge debate because the fundamental principle is public access. Public access to nature, public access yeah. to public spaces. Mm -hmm. So, to be honest, the problem with the implementation, especially in the Arab world, that uh, as Professor Kamel have said and um, Arctic uh, Ayman before, the segregation comes with the package, unfortunately. Because as a business, and sometimes, most of the times, at least in the Egyptian context, I come and I think Sheikh Zayed, um, which is um, a city in the uh, west of uh, Cairo, uh, the whole area, and uh, if you know Sawiris, he's a very, very rich <laughs> businessman, one of the richest, have, have that impact, and yeah. he is coming with his uh, package to develop it. But the residents are having huge fears of accessing it and that it will be a privatized segregated space rather than one of the open spaces for them so it's it need to be very carefully dealt with if you would say especially with the funding problems <laughs> Yes, I have got a lot to learn in this uh, lecture. Honestly, it's a truly really, uh, deep lecture. Um, I um, There's plenty to talk about, uh, honestly. We couldn't stop. It's a really a pleasure to, uh, uh, to be, to having you, Dr. Karim. It's a pleasure to have uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Kamil uh, and Dr. Uh, Yasser and Mohandis uh, Ayman Zaytar. All their comments are really great. And uh, uh, unfortunately, um, it's the, the over of our lecture. Uh, more comments, we will have it in our next lecture. We will be grateful if you could join us. To but for now, I apologize that we could uh, not have a lecture, so we could have uh, other obligations to perform. Thank you very much for the attendance, uh, and hope to see you again in other lectures. Many thanks, Dr. Karim, again. Thanks so much, Dr. Zay. Thank you very thanks, much. Thanks, uh, Professor Campbell, of course. Yeah. Uh, Arctic Data, uh, Ayman, uh, sorry, and uh, uh, Dr. Yasser, thanks so much for actually inviting me and yes. uh, making making my day actually by learning heaps and heaps <laughs> about landscape arctic i learned more people. than i give thanks so much and uh, really appreciate people. the opportunity thank you ramadan kareem aliko jamia ramadan you Allah. and i wish i had known you before قبل ما نطلع بس حابة أشكر دكتور كريم وأحكي لكم عن المحاضرة تبعت next week يوم الخميس راح تكون مع المهندس سهل حيادي we're gonna have our public lecture next Thursday with the architect سهل حيادي at 6:30 p.m. and next week we'll have Ayman Zaytar next next Tuesday we'll have architect Ayman Zaytar as well. شكرا نشاطنا عظيم يعني من الكلية وجهودكم مباركة جميعا جهودكم مباركة جميعا. Okay thank you thank you. تيكو العافية جميعا باي باي تيكو. دكتور كامل. اه معك أيوة. يعطيك العافية شكرا لك دكتور. شكرا لكم يعطيك العافية أبدعتوا thank you for all it was informative. وما حدا بشكر الكورونا بس هالكرايسيس قربتنا شوي نشوف بعض بعضنا ونحكي مطولا so we could debate and talk and bring a future part within the architecture profession God bless you all thank you sir thank you ياسر thank you كريم thank you أيمن and thanks our students اللي متحملينا لفترة هالكورونا thank you very much دكتور يعطيك العافية وشكرا على الكومنتس يعني كثير تعلمنا من هاي المحاضرة وتعلمنا منك دائما طبعا نتعلم احنا دكتور 
حبيب سيدي حبيبنا شكرا لك الله يعطيكم الف عافيه بامان الله